Hey guys, welcome back to Stories Untold. We're doing the last one, which is the last session. I'm kind of curious about, is this all in my head or what? Because I mean, the other, I don't know about the first one, but these two were definitely connected. So maybe they're all connected somehow. Some commands maybe case ends up. Yeah, we figured that out the last one. I think that's enough of that for now. Oh. Okay. You're quite fond of this show, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, come on. Let's get you down to the observation room. What? What is going on? I'm in a hospital. Yeah, that kind of explains the end of the... This place must be starting to feel like home to you. Previous one. Oh, exit. Don't worry. I'll try and get you out of here eventually. Oh, okay, thank you. Just Time here. to quit. Help us here. What? I don't like this room. It feels like an interrogation room. Okay, are we through in the next room? Just relax, and we'll get started in a moment. All right. All right, Mr. Asian, now are you ready? Just hit record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. Okay. Um, it's this one right here, right? This is subject... 12, Subject. 86, 23, new session entry. We have myself, Dr. Alexander, leading, and in a room we have our patient, Mr. James Asian. As we know, James has recently recovered from a two-week coma oh. following his accident. What was my accident? In our last three sessions, James's attempts to recollect events of the accident seen him merging his memory with his imagination. These episodes have always ended in panic, and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. Let's try and do this one better, James. So when you're ready, let's bring this back. Okay. I know how difficult this must be, but you can do this. James, it's time to remember. No. Your mind, it's like a conscious black box. It can show you your memories. Look into it. Okay, we're doing this again. Oh, okay, let's do it. Oh, hey. Okay. Oh, we're back here again. In your most recent episode, you recalled a false memory of a remote weather station. I don't think it was a weather station. You were isolated from the rest of the world inside your coma. We interacted with you daily, encouraging you to wake. Your family would do number puzzles with you. Anything really to bring you back. Oh, so it's their fault I had a horrible Nicole needed life. answers, James. Do you remember? I have another signal here for you, James. It's at 5610 FM. You can't miss it. Oh, I'm actually doing this? Oh! Hey, cool. Alright, um... All right, just don't give me freaking Morse code. Oh, it's actually at the line. It is. I don't know. There. And FM. Okay. Okay, we got report. This is twenty F twelve. Do they call it wait nineteen? Oh, it's a police report. 
I've oh. Had numbers, James. I guess he is. Okay, can I clear that up a little bit better? Okay. Um, arrived on scene to discover two cars that had been involved in a near head-on collision. Mr. Asian found lying down outside his vehicle, no seatbelt apparently, with head tra and head injuries, probably going through the windshield. Wear your seatbelts, people. Uh, an ambulance was immediately called. His passenger was trapped in the vehicle in critical condition from wounds sustained in the collision. The driver of the blue sedan, Mr. Hemmings was found dead on arrival. It was noticed that there was a strong smell of whiskey from the driver and an empty whiskey bottle on the passenger seat. All right, so it wasn't my fault, probably. Mr. Asian was questioned on, on the scene. Really? With head Trump? Okay. Uh, he described an oncoming blue sedan being clearly out of control, which he swerved to avoid. Mr. Asian's pastor was his sister. Oh, that's probably the... Okay, that's probably the one in the second episode where we saw their face. That was probably her. The driver of the blue sedan is an ex-police officer of 20 years. Yeah, he should have known better. Yeah, I got that. But, uh... I don't... Report. Oh, 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 okay. Line one. Is there a line one? Okay, so probably the 20th fatal accident. My cursor. Man, it's so hard to see sometimes. I think it was a space. Alright. Oh, I wonder if it has to be all caps. Maybe I should put it all in caps. You ever look at a word so much and spell it so many times that eventually starts looking wrong? Fatal. It doesn't look right to me all of a sudden. Okay, anyway, um, I don't know if there's actually spaces between these. So I'm going to remove it unless there's a, a little X. All right, line two. We got to do empty whiskey. That's not right. There. Yeah, I missed the H. It didn't look right. Okay, line three. Out of control. No, no, no. Didn't mean to do that. Alright, so it's probably spaces. Yes, we did it. Okay. Find the signal, James. Listen to the voices. I don't know if that's a good thing to say. James. Finally. Seven thousand FM. not like this at all. I've worked with Officer Hennings for six years and not once have we even talked about alcohol. Drunk driving. He, he was a father, a, a husband. He was fine. No way he calls this. It's him. This Haitian guy. He's got something to hide. Oh. Oh, this is new. Or oh, I can actually move around. Ooh. This doesn't make sense to you. Yeah. I'm in a box.
You step into the hospital ward. Only seems abandoned. Your vision is blurry. Oh, that was Deadpool for a second. Time to quit. Oh, help is here. It's a cigarette. It's quitting smoking. Okay, I got gotcha. you. All of your episodes were recorded to tape. This is the fourth. Sometimes they make you watch your past sessions to see what really happened. Oh my god, I thought that shadow was somebody standing there. You tense up. Someone else is here. Yeah, I did tense up, so it's, it's true. Oh, can I see through the crack? Very white. Okay. Hello? Okay, this is weird. Oh, it opened. I didn't think it was gonna open. What's this? Oh, a key! You grab the keys from the table. They weigh heavy in your hand. Play for the front door. Or back door, whatever this door is. No. Okay. Coma ward. Oh, nice little. You spent most waking moments in here. The only video they have some horror compilation. Trash. Hey! It's not trash. <laughs> what have we got here? Free surgery. Oh. You only caught a glimpse of the, of the room. You guess that's why there's no details here. Oh, so this is all in my head? Maybe? Another door you never open. You don't know what's in here. The waiting area is dark, but you feel a presence right behind you? Someone breathes on your neck standing over you. I don't like people breathing on my neck, but I can't see. Oh, that doesn't look ominous at all. You feel dread in the pit of your stomach. Alright, well now I do too, so... Oh. Am I dying? Oh! Okay, we have a 22-year-old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was awake and mobile at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency room. Oh, room. hey! The other passengers died in the accident. Oh no, my give sister's no dead. Pulse. Prepare for defib. Amp charge full to ten and give me one hundred jewels. Come on, hundred jewels. Charging out full to ten. A video camera? Come on. Oh, am I doing it? I can't see what I'm doing. Get this on the screen now. Oh, I gotta turn this back on. Okay, oh, it's on. Now what? Jewels charging up full to ten. Oh, 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 okay. There, thank you for telling me the jewels part. Clear. Oh, the ten. 
No reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. Okay. 200 joules. Keep the right. air charge at 10. Okay, it took me a little while. Joules. Keep the charge at 10. Let's go. I'm working on it. Give me a second. Okay. Shock me, duck. Okay, we have a reaction of some sort here, a weak signal. Okay. Let's keep going. Increase again. 360, charge full. Working on it. 360. That seems high. Is this good for me? Come on, 360, hurry. It only goes faster than I have. Okay. Hit me again. Well, oh, my eyeball's moving. It seems we have a pulse. Rhythm is stable. We need to run an x-ray right away. Okay. Where are we with that x-ray? Let's get it going now, please. There! Oh my god! It took me so long! Thank you! It looks like an intracerebral hemorrhage. We need oh yeah, sure. Now to relieve pressure. Prepare for trepanation. Switch on a drill, please. Hey, okay, drill's on. Now what? The drill. Please. Can we get this on the screen, please? There. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is more difficult than I thought. You've made excellent progress. You're doing great. We need you to stay calm and try to relax before we go through these next oh, 7,000 FM. We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this. Are you actually awake for when they do this type of crap to you? I sound like I have a headache. Do you? Twenty two oh five, I wonder if that's important. Uh, not only is tonight New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you leave on a six-month trip abroad with friends. Mom, Dad, and your sister, Jennifer, have decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room, and as usual, you don't recognize a soul. Oh, uh, look around. The room is full of chatty strangers, mostly friends of Mom and Dad. There is a door to the hall. Open door to hall. Okay, open door. Uh, go to hall. You push through the crowd into the hallway. The hallway is welcome as ever. Only time this, only time the folks have put away, put a great big banner across the main hall. Half finished drinks are abandoned in almost every horizontal surface. Stairs lead up all through, although the party is firmly downstairs. For some reason, this text is a little difficult for me to read. Um, go upstairs. As much as you love to, you promised you'd stay downstairs with the party. All right. Look around. Same as ever. Stairs, door to the living room, and door to the kitchen. All right, let's go to the kitchen. It's all the best parties are in the kitchen. Sure, that's where all the food is. The kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table, and the party is in full swing. Dad has cooked a hog roast, which sits proudly on the table, although no one is eating it. Look around. There's a utility room and writing on the wall. Also, Jen is here signaling you. Look at writing. Look at the wall. I wonder what's on the wall. Alright. Go to sister. You push through, apologizing over and over. 
to get to Jennifer. You hug and you're going to miss each other and you thank her for the party. She asks if you're enjoying the party. Say yes. You tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy it anyway and to loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. Uh, go get drink. You pour Jen a drink and one for yourself too. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She's always has a question. She asks if you have everything you sorted out for the big trip. Yes. You tell her yes. They packed everything with plenty of room to spare. Another hug. Your family have really gone out of their way to make a trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective and maybe not F up so much. She's going to miss you. You're going to miss her. She walks away. Jen has disappeared into the crowd. You're left standing, nodding and smiling at the proving faces. There is so much to do for this move. You can't mess it up. First, a drink. Drink. You pour down another drink. Anything to move the night along. Drink. You pour down another drink. Anything to move the night along. All right. The room is full. There is a utility room and ready on the wall. I don't. I want to know what the wall says. All right. You open the door and peer in. Ooh, this is the first time actually you have to look in there. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where Dad keeps his fine wines and whiskeys. Ceiling to floor racks. A collector, although he does act. Although he does actually drink them too, there's a bottle with a ribbon around it and a card. Look at the card. You pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25 year old double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. With your whiskey in hand, you take it in the room around you, about you. There must be hundreds, no, thousands of pounds worth of drinks in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. Go find dad. Uh. Go to hallway. Look around. Go to kitchen. You head back into the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. You stumble out of the utility room, back into the kitchen. This is one strong whiskey. You take another swig, give the thumbs up to Dad across the room. He nods and winks. The accident was totally my fault, wasn't it? Never drink and drive, people. This is what happens. Look around. Busy and no noisy. We'll need to find somewhere quieter. Go to hallway. Go back over to the hallway. You bumps and laughs on the way through, and you make it to the hall. You saw dead in your tracks. It's Jen, covered in blood. Go to Jen. She's staring straight down at you. No one else notices. Look around. Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. Uh, what would I say in this situation? Uh, touch Jen? I'm dying. I don't understand. Am I dying? I don't understand. Help. Oh. oh, no. What do I do? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't understand. We tried our best, Mrs. Asian, but her injuries were too severe. No, I don't understand. I was just talking to her. 
I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I am so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Asian, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange oh, for you God. to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. Oh, but she... Mom knows it's all my fault. You're standing in the hallway. Something has stopped you in your tracks. While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. She waves her hand in front of you and asks if, she can, if you can drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. These, those words echo. No. Drive her home. Okay, good. Um. Say yes. Okay, just yes. Look around. Go to the kitchen living room, leave from here while stairs take you up. Uh, go to Jen. Go upstairs? He looked to call all night, but Jen is waiting patiently. Hmm. Go outside. There's no point until you find those car keys. Thank you for a hint. Okay, look for car keys. You need to look for them. They must be either in the kitchen or the living room. Go to living room. You sure you're the keys are in the living room? The living room is a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat on chairs having civilized conversations. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mom is pouring a drink at the drinks cabinet. Look for keys. You need to look for them. They must be either in the kitchen or the living room. Look around. Off table, drinks, cabinet. One of the chairs is overlooking with jackets and coats. Uh. Look for jacket. You search through all the jackets and coats until you find yours. Aha! Car keys in the pocket. You grab both. Go to hallway and do the worst thing you can ever do. He's in hand, you head back into the hall. Jen thanks you for helping her out. She has work in the morning. And no one else is in any fit state to drive. I certainly am not. You can handle it though. You don't know the road. You know the road like the back of your hand, don't you? I don't remember that being there. Okay. Uh, go outside. You open the front door and walk out into the freezing night. The cold air hits you. You are glad you have your jacket with you. There are dust, dusting of snow around as you step down from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house, and the car sits at the front of the house. Go to car. You fumble with a car handle, confused until Jen tells you, maybe use the key in your hand. That should have tipped her off that she that I'm drunk. Okay. Use keys. Only the car keys, you eventually get the door open and climb inside. The car is freezing. As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens the car glove box and hands you a note and a key that was inside. She tells you that it's for you when you return. Okay. Can I read the note now? The note is from your dad. It reads, Hi, son. Hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator. I'm back to get... Oh... Okay. All right. Start car. You try to turn the ignition to the sheer willpower. So you hold the keys in your hand. Use keys on car. It takes a number of attempts, but you eventually slot the key into the ignition. All right. Start the car. You turn the key. And in the ignition, the car roars to life. Drive. The car squeals to stay stationary. Oh my god, I didn't know how to do everything. Jen suggests releasing the brake, giving you a wide-eyed stare. I would too. Alright. He very hesitantly released the handbrake. 
drive. Or do I need to do something else now? Vipers? <laughs> you put the car into gear and pull out of the driveway like a first time driver. You really? You, I am driving very drunk on the road towards the town where your sister stays. Jen started dozing off as soon as the journey got going. It shouldn't take long. You come to a junction. Is it left or right? You can't remember. Turn. Left. You don't want to, but you better ask Jen for direction. Ask Jen. She grunts and throws her arm to the left. I was right. It's left. Of course it's left. Go left. You turn the card left at the junction. Confident that you are on the right road now, you loosen up and put your foot down on the accelerator. You feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up in her chair and clutches your arm. She asks you to slow down. Slow down. That's not what really happened though, is it? You're all over the place, James. Pull over. Jen is hitting your arm and yelling at you, crazy sister. Strange. There is a set of headlights coming directly at you, but really slow, like in slow motion. There. You try to react, but your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights merge with your car, and the outside joins James, the inside. For sake, pull over. The whole world around you begins to scream. James! This is why you don't drink and drive. It was at this very moment, wasn't it, James? The moment you lost it all. Your sister. Her parents. Yourself. And then you made it worse. Go on. Show us what you did. You wake up in the car. The world is upside down. Your seatbelt struggles against gravity, trying to hold you in your seat. An impact into another car has torn a hole in the chassis. Poisonous fumes spill into into your car from the engine. You are in grave danger. You have to get out of here. Take off seat. You release yourself from the seat. Gravity takes over and you slump on the the roof of the, the car. Yeah, you're, you're a little bright in my eye right now. Alright, uh... Crawl. Crawl out. Oh, uh, bet you what I know. I, I know what he did. He put the whiskey in the guy. Okay. Okay. Look around. The car is broken beyond repair. The windows are smashed and there is wreckage all around you. You are both wearing your seat belts. Um. Grab Jen. Um, exit car. You squeeze through the wreckage and fall to your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. The blue car has smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You are standing holding your whiskey, and your dad's note and flashing lights are approaching at the distance. So, yeah, uh, my Mr. Asian, he's uh, a douchebag. Okay, so put whiskey in other car. With the lights approaching closer, you begin to hear shrill of their sirens. You simply cannot go to jail for this. You clean the bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey. You're, th you're then very deliberately spill the remaining remainder of the bottle's contents onto the driver, and you toss the incriminating evidence onto his passenger seat. A circle of flashing lights surrounds you, illuminating the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, and walks towards you. Look at them. The lights are, are overwhelming. All other details are fading into the past. Pass. Oh. Sorry. You're not making any sense. <laughs> hey, I've never been called out like that before. Alright, um... Go to... Silhouette. As he approaches the man, the pulsing, pulsating lights 
around you get dimmer and dimmer while the pain in you. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident, that poor man, me. You have to remember. Maybe I don't want to. It was all your fault. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I just got headbutted by the portal ball. I know what you did. How you left me there to protect yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. Oh. You went headfirst into that officer and you wrecked all of our lives. You don't know that. You couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Say it, James. No. How do I say it? Say it. Tell them. It was my fault. Listen to yourself. It has to end, James. Okay. Do you not understand? No, not at all. Please uh, give me a hint. This episode you're having must come to an end. Oh, here we go. Make it stop. Make it stop. Do you remember? Stop the session in the station. Dr. Alexander is Good always watching a remote. Started. I don't know if anyone else is ever with him. Put an end to this nightmare. You can do this, James. You can let go. Oh, there we go. Well, I think we've made progress today, Mr. Asian. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. I don't think Although you... I don't suspect they'll take you anywhere. I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Come on, let's get you back to your shows. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, that was great. I really like this game. Um, yeah, I mean, they're all connected, and I didn't really realize that one, except for the first one. That one just threw me off. But, you know, by the time I got to the third one, <laughs> I started to realize, wait a minute. <laughs> but anyway, it was good. Um, be down in the description and check it out yourself. It's not one like the free games I usually do. Um, but yeah, let me know down in the comments what you thought. Um, Please leave a like and subscribe, it would be great, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you. Bye.